Hey everybody, today it's going to be a March prediction for the 2024 governor's elections. I did this last three months ago and it's still pretty early. We haven't really gone through many primaries, so I haven't really made many changes, but let's see where things are at. So we've got 11 seats up for grabs. Let's start with the safe states. These are expected to be over a 10 point margin of victory. It doesn't mean they can't get down under 10. It just means it's more likely they're going to be in double digits. For the Democrats, we're going to start in Delaware. This is a blue state. It's an open seat, so it should theoretically be a little bit more competitive than if there were an incumbent running. They've got a late primary. It's in September. There's really no bench here for the Republicans. Somebody could emerge, but the focus is going to be with the Democrats. And as of now, it's just far more likely this is going to be safe for the Democrats. Now for the Republicans. Let's start in North Dakota. Now we know Doug Burgum is not going to run for a third term. We've got a couple of potential notable Republicans facing off in a primary. And this is kind of like the opposite of Delaware. There's very little Democratic bench here. It's a very red state, so this is going to be safe for the GOP. OP. Let's look at West Virginia. Here's another super red state, but the Democrats not that long ago were winning statewide elections here. And of course, they still do have Joe Manchin, but this is an open seat. It looks like Republicans are going to have a competitive primary here. Democrats are going to struggle to get anything going. So this one is also going to stay safe. Let's go west to Utah. Incumbent Spencer Cox does have to get through a Republican primary. I don't think a Trump style Republican is going to be able to take him out. This is a more establishment friendly state, but the Democrats look like they're going to put up a state rep. It's tough to imagine imagine that amounting to anything. The incumbent has been popular. It's a red state. It's going to stay safe. And the last safe state for the Republicans is going to be Montana. Now we know that incumbent Greg Gianforte is running for re-election. This is not a state where Democrats have no chance, but Gianforte has been popular. There was a recent poll out that showed him up by 22 against a Democratic opponent. I last had this at likely, but now I can move this over to the safe column. Now let's go down to the likely states. These are between a five and a 10 point margin. Let's start on the East Coast. Let's do Vermont. If it's Phil Scott, then this would go safe. I'm keeping it at likely because we don't know what Scott's going to do yet. If Scott retires, this is immediately going to become at least a toss up. So that's why I'm going to leave this at likely for now. We'll go west to Indiana. Here's another open seat. It's probably going to be Mike Braun for the Republicans. Democrats have a weak bench. Braun does have to navigate a primary. There's also going to be the same libertarian candidate running again who got 11% of the vote in 2020. It is a fairly red state. You might remember when Mike Pence won election for governor, it was not by any kind of a safe margin. They also had Democrat Joe Donnelly in the U.S. Senate. So I can't put this at safe until I see what happens. It's going to be likely Republican. Let's hop over to Missouri. Here's another open seat. Mike Parson is term limited. So it looks like another fairly competitive primary between Jay Ashcroft, the Secretary of State, and Mike Kehoe, the Lieutenant Governor. The Ashcroft name is huge in Missouri. Jay Ashcroft's dad, John, was governor and U.S. Senator from here. But in the primary polling, he's not completely running away with it just yet. So we'll see what happens with that primary election in early August. Democrats have a weak bench here, but I might be a little bit more cautious than everybody else. So that's why I don't put this quite at safe. I'm going to put it at likely. Now let's go all the way to the Northwest into the Evergreen State. Let's take a look at Washington. Here's another state where it's going to be an open seat. Longtime Governor Jay Inslee is not running for a fourth term. Washington does use the top two primary system. Right now we've got two high profile candidates. We've got Bob Ferguson for the Democrats. He's the current Attorney General. And the Republicans have Dave Reichert. He served about a decade and a half in the U.S. House. Ferguson is currently in office. He's been in there a decade himself. He's going to have higher name ID, but Reichert is going to be right under that. People are going to quickly remember his name. And there are other candidates in the race. Reichert is probably going to be the best fit for the Republicans. You got to have a little bit more of a moderate appeal to be competitive as a Republican here. The polling does show it's going to be Ferguson and Reichert in the general. Then Ferguson is going to have the advantage. It's a blue state. They have not elected a Republican for governor here since the 80s, but sometimes things change and streaks end. Reichert is a reasonable fit, but Ferguson is going to be tough to beat. I had this at likely Democrat, and I'm going to keep it at likely Democrat. This is definitely going to be a race to follow as the months go on. Now, we've got two states left, and none of these are lean ratings. They're both going to be tilt. That means a one point or less margin of victory. Let's go to the Granite State of New Hampshire. It's another open seat. Chris Sununu or Sununu is not running for re-election. Both sides have to get through a primary, and that's going to be all the way in September. Looks like Republicans are likely to go with former U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte. Chuck Morris is also in this race, but Ayotte looks like she's the front runner. Democrats also have a primary primary. They have Joyce Craig. They have Cindy Warmington. Craig appears to have the backing of the establishment. In the general election, there's a couple of polls. They show AI with an advantage, but it's an open seat. Anything could happen. Nobody's at 50%. It's really a pure toss-up as we wait and see what happens. But since I don't do toss-ups, my best guess is to give the slight edge to AI. So it's super close. We just don't know what's going to happen seven or eight months out. But this is going to be a tilt for the Republicans. The last state and probably the most high profile is going to be North Carolina. It's likely to be Josh Stein 
Stein and Mark Robinson. This is going to be an epic showdown. Mark Robinson is highly polarizing. He gets a ton of support for him. He's going to get people coming out against him. Josh Stein, to me, seems to be more of a run-of-the-mill Democrat. And I know this race is going to get messy in a hurry. Robinson is going to have to deal with a ton of the media and criticisms about some of his past statements. Maybe that ends up not mattering and it's all about policy for the future. It seems like this race might be similar to the presidential race where Donald Trump is Mark Robinson. People are either going to come out because they love him or they're scared of him. There's already a Democrat in office here in Roy Cooper. The state legislator here is overwhelmingly Republican. Sometimes voters want a little bit of balance in their governor. They just recently did the same thing in Kentucky. So I think this one is going to go down to the wire. I think each side could win it. It's just too early. But if I have to put a rating on it, I'm going to go with a tilt for the Democrat. So that's it. If this panned out, there are no flips for either party, but there are definitely opportunities for both sides in New Hampshire and North Carolina. Washington is another under the radar race I think people should be taking a look at. And there's always an outside chance something happens in one of the other states like Missouri, Indiana, or Vermont. But that's the prediction for March. Things could easily change, but let me know in the comments. What do you think about this prediction? Are you less cautious than I am and you have Missouri and Indiana as safe Republican? Maybe you have Washington as safe or maybe as lean Democrat. Or maybe you're looking at a different race entirely like North Dakota or Delaware. And what's going to happen in New Hampshire and North Carolina? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.